now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dave Emmons Show. And today's show, uh, the, when you see this, it'll probably be uh, Thursday, Friday, St. Patrick's Day. We're pre-recording this, but it's an absolute, uh, this kind of, this show is actually I got excited about because I got my buddy, Tom Althouse, who's a screenplay writer, and uh, he's going to be on the show uh, with Mike Emery, uh, one of the top uh, scientist, uh, he writes these essays that, that every scientist looks at and, and watches. But I'm going to go to Tom Althaus. He's kind of a co-host. He's been a co-host on the show. You probably saw him before. And uh, he's talked about the Matrix and the Immortals. He, he's been a musician, an actor, an author, a screenplay writer, and he worked in Hollywood as a script doctor. And he's working on a documentary right now. And that's the, his, his life about this whole script and about the Immortals and going into the Matrix. And he, he'll probably talk a little bit about that. Uh, and Tom is going to be with us. And then, of course, Mike Emery. Uh, he was born in Montana, born and raised in Monta Montana, U.S. And now he lives in the U.K. He was on the show a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to try to, I guess, decipher some of the things that uh, Mike was talking about. Uh, he, was, he studied physics at Montana State University. And uh, he was, he's, he's on Facebook. You can see him on Facebook, Mike Emery. And he's figured out a lot of workings of the universe. He gets these downloads and uh, he talks about St. Germain and he talks about others that he's living through and he gets these downloads, just like Tom Althaus does too. He's, he's gotten, when he wrote the matrix uh, back way back, I guess some years ago, he'll tell you when, but he was kind of ahead of his time. And I think we just had a very interesting conversation between Mike and Tom, and they're both on, walking on the same path on this matrix and also what Mike calls the shit show. And I, th I thought that was kind of cute uh, how, how everything's arranged. And some people ask me, so what, what does Mike mean? And I had to try to explain to them comments, but if you have any comments after I air this show, then write them and uh, I'll send them to Mike or Tom or one of the two, but uh, he studied, uh, Mike studied the physics uh, and he, he was uh, enlightened on the way and he left a trail of written essays and, and things that he's thought and he, he figured out on his own uh, after college. Uh, and he he doesn't teach students as per se, but he he helps teach other, I guess, uh, scientists and they they read his writings and his essays. So he's been influential all around the world. He's on academia.edu. Uh, and that's where I found Mike. And I read a lot of his essays. And oh, wow, they're, they're, <laughs> they're out of this world. They really are because this world is not what we think it is. Uh, so Mike, uh, he goes through this He's, he's interconnected uh, throughout the internet uh, with a lot of different things. And he has unconventional views and a lot of people have a hard time uh, following him. He's no ivory tower man, but he's a self-made uh, physicist and he knows a lot about, and you know, about the science. And he's, uh, he was on Montana ranches when he first started. Uh, he was in rodeos. He's a champion skier. And uh, he had, you know, he was in college and he's a commercial fisherman. He, he's in business later and he, he made his money off of alcohol and some oil exploration. And that was in Alaska. And believe me, I live in Alaska and I know they like their drink up there. <laughs> so that's, that's, I know you can make some money there, but these two are going to get together and uh, I'll probably be staying out a little bit, just asking questions because these, the, both of these guys are interesting. They're on the same path. And here's, here's the books real quick. This is my book here. Uh, they, what do they want? That was my first book and it's selling. It's still selling every quarter. Uh, and this book here, I need to push it a little bit more senseless wars and conflicts. And uh, that's from a lot of lost blood and treasure. My third book is going to be the angels and supernatural entities in which is coming out in two weeks. So, and I'm writing a sci-fi thing, just what these guys are talking about. I want to open this show and this is kind of scary for me. I got two experts here and I'm right in the middle like a sandwich. So I, and I could, I, I might turn out to be a hunk of bologna or I could be a steak sandwich, a steak in between these two, these two here. So I want to start off uh, with, with, uh, I, I guess we'll start off with consciousness and then we're going to go into like the matrix and everything's not believable. Tom's got a list of things he's going to talk about. Mike will elaborate on his scientific facts. And let's open, let's open with Mike on consciousness. Mike, could you explain that to us? Sure. Yeah, no problem. It's, it's, it's really easy. Uh, the, uh, uh, first of all, I, I wasn't in oil business in Alaska. I was in real estate, okay? uh, real estate development. Yeah, but so anyway, 
and and the the bar, the highest grossing bar in Alaska. But so as far as consciousness is concerned, it's real simple. Everything starts as a seed in darkness, period. A seed or an idea in darkness. And where that darkness is, or has been, it's changing, is at Planck length. And absolutely everything you see comes starts as a seed in that darkness every microsecond. It's 10 to 33 zeros behind it, thereabouts, the, the blink rate you know, of everything passing through the very first Planck length, you know, the, the source of consciousness is Planck length. And, and the way that consciousness cohes to a certain extent in darkness was by God's law. I am was a question, you know, who am I? Who, what am I? <laughs> and then because there was nobody else there, then the only answer was I am that I am. And so that made two little half circles, you know, and she loved them very much because what had been going on before this, the, the consciousness of herself had been there in darkness all by herself. She's very lonely and she's in, in, in deadly in fear of loneliness as you might have noticed amongst females, even to this day. Now, and so there was fear and loneliness. And then the next thing, you had this little half circle, you know, that manifests in the darkness. And she loved it very much. And so the ethers, that's what led to the ethers, are made quite literally made out of love. And they are piezoelectric green, which is the color of love, is the color of the heart chakra. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and so that piezoelectric green is the, the basis of everything that's been going on here until just recently. And when she changed, she herself has changed the emotion of space, of darkness, from fear to euphoria. It's, and so up until now, everything has been manifest by the duality of fear and love. First fear and then love and so all memories it takes seven image only realms i'll get into explain how that works you know they're flat 2d image only realms take seven of them and the emotions carried by spin energy it goes like all thread bolt through those seven uh, parallel realms and then they have to circle up and manifest in the hexagonal ethers and so you got six sides of the hexagonal cell and then the center which is the god part of it you know herself you know there and that's where the number seven comes from. It's the only <laughs> scientific and exact explanation that you've ever heard of where the number seven comes from. And that's it, mm -hmm. period. Now, you were okay. talking about God, the Son, and the Divine Mother, right? Those three? Well, they, they, no, I'm just talking about pure consciousness right now. That's what we, we want. You, you wanted to start a consciousness. Yeah, you said consciousness you said that. Stuff, yeah, right? You said the woman or the lady was uh, alone and she wanted to create stuff out of darkness. I was just trying to get to that divine mother type of thing. Yeah, she's no bitch. Yeah, you know, she's divine mother now, but she was an old bitch for a long time. Oh. You know? Because every single bit of our karma comes from her. Every bit of it, every single bit of it comes from her emotion of fear and love. Every single word ever written in every book on this planet is bullshit because it's all based on duality, love and fear. Okay. Mm -hmm. and otherwise you wouldn't remember it. It's, it's all of our memories are tied together by love and fear. And so what's coming now is euphoria and the euphoria expunges love and fear. And so thankfully all the memories go away. They cease to exist, cannot be found. Which, where does that leave us? And the answer is in the euphoric now, right now. Okay, let's go Having, to Tom. Uh, Mike, let's go to Tom on his consciousness and his ideas, how he come up with his book. I mean, his screenplays like The Immortal and Matrix. Well, I didn't finish on consciousness. Okay. I, I, I okay. pretty much finished. So, All right. so, okay. so the, the, the consciousness starts in darkness. Everything starts in darkness. And it, it starts in darkness by the rule, I am that I am. And and then it goes about making things manifest, like like, like explained briefly. Uh, but the the thing about that aspect of consciousness, what I just described, Edgar Casey did the exact, virtually the exact same thing. 
only my explanation is more detailed because I understand the ethers. And so in that regard, Merlin, myself, I'm ahead of Edgar Casey, as well as the Monroe Institute has made the deepest dives. You now it's, it's really quite amazing, but anyway, I'll go ahead and go to Tom. Okay. Yeah. Tom, could you uh, tell us uh, the Tom Althouse here? Uh, could you tell us how you come up with the, the ideas of what your screenplays are and what you feel about the, uh, uh, you know, the consciousness? Sure. Um, I, like I said, before we got in the program, I don't negate anything or anybody, anybody says, I believe that we all should be pure sources or channels for what we receive, which allows us to do our journey and our work. And so um, that's the path I'm on. That's why I tell people I won't receive their pamphlets when they want to send it to me, their belief systems, things like that. I celebrate their faith and their, that spark of faith, which brings us all together. We celebrate faith, not beliefs, religions, and constructs. So for me, I believe that we should have our platter, if you will, with no constructs on it. Everything's basically a guess. And we shouldn't presume to put that on anybody else to say, this is, this is the right way especially when children's lives are at stake and our journeys could go awry if we follow the wrong lead. So what I tell people is discover for yourself what is your journey? What is it you are to do? Apply yourself to that and start from very basic, basic ideas of compassion, love, things like that. Fear has no place. And so I actually am teaching a system now I've been asked to teach it on layered thinking. And in that, you take only the positive uh, memories and things like that and keep them in the forefront. And that allows layers of positive. Negative feelings or any fears or anything that's been in the past goes back into a reference section in your mind. I call it the library, reference library, where it goes back there and your mind, by telling it that it is going to be back as a reference section, basically, if you will, it does no longer chews on it. It doesn't chew on it anymore. So therefore you can be a presence that's all positive. So in my life, I've had children, animals, things like that, responding to layered positive feeling where I'm not escaping the negative. I'm putting it back as a reference where my mind, which likes to compute and solve problems, we're made that way. 